In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to use the text dialog box and how to add text in Photoshop. I have used Photoshop for many, many, many years as my go-to graphic design tool for advertising. I've done literally tens of thousands of page-sized ads in Photoshop over the years, some with horses, some without. It's been a big part of my career, and I love doing graphic design in Photoshop because it gives me the latitude to do a lot of things that I can't get done in other software, like InDesign or even Illustrator. I have a love-hate relationship with Illustrator, so we won't get into that. All right, into the text box. So the text tool is over here, and we're going to do the horizontal type text for today. I have another tutorial where I, sh where I will show you how to do vertical text and also how to type text on a curve in Photoshop. All right, so we're gonna grab the horizontal text tool here and we're gonna go ahead and click um, in our space and you'll see this is um, no text appearing. Normally that would be the nice little lorem. The reason why it's not there is because my text color is currently set to white. <laughs> so we're gonna change it off of white. Okay, the text properties are over here to the right. And if you don't see them right away, you can open up your window, scroll down to um, character um, in here somewhere. Yep, there's character right there in the C's. You can click on character and that will open up this properties area. There's also a paragraph properties area as well, but we are in the character one right now. And I also have paragraph open. You may have these carrots closed up here. So we'll go ahead and if you do go ahead and open them this way. All right, the first thing that you're going to notice is that there's a font and you can also change a lot of these um, up here across the top as well as over in this properties dialog box. So you have the fonts that are available to you um, on your machine. So we'll just change this to, let's go ahead and do something else. Let's do something that's easy to read. Like, let's go ahead and do impact, I guess. Okay. So when you set a piece of text into a document, like this is just a plain white page, it's going to come up with the lorem ipsum to kind of show you what that font looks like. And then all you have to do, and I have it selected right now, which is why it's black background with a white in the front. If I deselect it, this is what it looks like. And I can just backspace over it and type my own text right on into my document just using my keyboard. All right, so we can choose our character. Now, some type characters, some different fonts will have different varieties of weights. So when you do text in a program like Photoshop, it's different than being in like Word or a word processor where it will sort of apply the bold or the italic or whatever over the top of the type that's already there. In Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, those types of programs, if you want to have a font that has a thinner line or a thicker line or that has an italic um, or a bold or a bigger bold, then you're going to have to be able to choose that based on that font's attributes. Impact is a display font. This is all you get. So let's pick a different font that has a little bit of those those um, aspects to it. Let's try this Garamond Pro. So you'll see when I change to Garamond Pro, the regular lights up in white and I get a drop down area. So I can pick here and this particular font has an italic, a semi-bold, a semi-bold italic, a bold and a bold italic. So I can change the um, weight of the font and how the font looks based upon which one of those I choose. Some fonts will even have really funky display things. Um, there's a font called Giddy Up that is little horses and some of the um, what your aspects here will be you can have Giddy Up Thangs T-H-A-N-G-S or you can have Giddy Up the actual characters. So just know that if you can't figure out why can I not make it italic then um, that's the reason why is because that particular font doesn't have that face involved with it or that to particular attribute. Uh, 
Adobe has um, in Creative Cloud a place where you can go and get fonts. If you have the full creative suite of products for Adobe or you're a student with access to the full creative suite, you have access to a lot of different fonts. I'm not sure I do the full program. I'd have to check in to see what's available with the photography version of this. I would assume that it's not the entire font package that Adobe offers because <laughs> um, it can get kind of extensive. But you can install fonts on your machine and they're going to appear here. So be careful with fonts though. Downloading fonts from disreputable sources is not a good idea. Your computer can get a pretty nasty virus from that. Okay, let's go on down here and talk about what's in the next part of our character panel. At this point, we're still working with character and frankly, we only have one little line of text. So paragraph is kind of irrelevant at this particular point in time. But here is the size of the font and right now it's set to 48. I can come up to 16 or down to 16, whoops, you have to have it selected um, if you wanna make it smaller. So you can go down to 16, you can make one letter bigger. So I could make this one one letter 24 if I wanted to do like a drop cap or something like that. So just know that that's the font size. That's pretty straightforward. The next one is the letting. So the letting is the space between the lines. So if I type in something else, we'll just do type A second line. Okay, see how the S, let me zoom in on this a little bit. Let me solidify that. You have the little check mark up there before it'll let you leave it. Let me zoom in on that a bit and get back to my text tool and click on it again. That's how you edit text in Photoshop. You'll see that the lower hangy thing from the Y, I used to know the name of that, and the S are running into each other. So if we want to um, be able to loosen that so that there aren't, we're gonna have to change the letting. And that's what this number is here. So we can either um, come here and do auto, which will automatically set it, or we want to go a little bit higher than this number. Usually in a rule, we'll make it 36, and then I'm gonna tell you typically what I recommend is that you go two points higher than whatever your font size is. So that's kind of the minimum. If you have a font size of 36, then a letting size of 38 is gonna work really well. When you're dealing with smaller type, it's more readable if you leave a little bit of more space in it. So like if I use a 12 point type, most of the time I'll use 14 point letting or bigger. Even 15 and 16 sometimes looks really good. Again, you're not in Word anymore. So in Word, it's like line height. Here it's based off of the character size and it is called letting. That's the space in between the lines. If you wanted to make this double spaced, so to speak, um, 36, and 36 I think is 72 so we would do that and that technically would be double spaced okay um, I'm going to select this back again mind you that you do have to have things selected so letting is generally what's underneath the font so if I change that to 11 it is going to suck that up there where it belongs so it's on top of it it's the space in between Okay, so let's go back to 36 and 38. All right, so next we have um, these metrics, which you can adjust um, if that is available. So we could do optical and I, nope, that isn't even gonna happen. Um, it's gonna adjust it a little bit if I change those back and forth. I That is the space kind of um, the kerning between two letters. Okay, that would make more sense. So if you do the S and the E, the kerning is how close two letters appear to each other. Let's take this L and the I, because there's a little space in between there. And um, kerning is not something I don't even use anymore. So if we do optical kerning, uh, and it's not even going to let me set that because I don't think this font would allow for that. You'd have to have a font that allows for it. So we'll go ahead and go back to metrics. The next set of things is an important one to know. And this is the tracking uh, between characters in a line. And this is really a cool effect. Let me make this um, 
all caps. If you use an all caps like this, that looks really kind of wonky like that. But if we were to stretch this out and it's at negative 25 right now, but if we were to make it a hundred, see it adds space in between each of the characters. And when it adds space in between each of the characters, it makes that line longer. Um, and it allows a little bit of a little more graphic design to it. So even going more to like 200 would make it even better. And you can change that figure to negative or positive, whatever you need it to be. Um, negative makes everything closer. So negative 50 is gonna really scrunch things up. Um, when you're doing graphic design, there's a lot of times that you're gonna run into a situation where you need your text to stay away from a specific image just a little bit. And you can use this tracking between characters setting to be able to adjust that. So it should technically be at zero for whatever the font happens to be. All right, so those are our character settings in um, Adobe Photoshop. And those are the base ones. Oh, I forgot about the color. You can change the color of it um, right here under color. So those are the basic settings for characters. Now, you also have paragraph settings. So if you have more text than this, you can change the justification of the paragraph as well here. And if you get a lot of characters in here, there can even be a little bit more to this window, um, which will allow you to do things like indents and hyphenation. Hyphenation is something that drives me a bit crazy. So, and you have to do a paragraph type of set. So let me explain what I mean by that. So I just used the type tool to drag this line out. In other words, I clicked the type tool and then I came out here and clicked. That's how I did it. But I don't always have to add my type that way. I can click, hold and drag and make a square like so, so that my type would stay inside of that square. <laughs> now it's all stacked up because my letting is zero. So let's change the letting to 14 and the text size to 12. And that's gonna show you a paragraph here. And that red is kind of crazy, so let's make it black. But it'll give you the lorem ipsum and that's a paragraph, right? So rather than hitting the return of the size that you want, you actually can adjust the size of the type by pulling on these little squares and making it bigger or smaller, the box bigger or smaller to be able to get the type in. Um, and you can choose whether or not it will hyphenate a word. So let me do hyphenate a word. Let's go ahead and click on hyphenate. If hyphenate is chosen, you'll see that it has hyphens in here. When you're typesetting an ad, you don't want hyphens in your ad in general. In general speak, you don't. So I often leave that unclicked, which is probably why it was unclicked here. But this is where you can adjust your, um, your text. Or, sorry, your paragraph. These are all indents. So this is full-sided left indent, full-sided right indent. This is first line indent. So if I did that at 20 pixels or 20 points, see it moved that first line in. And then if I copy this, make another paragraph, it would do the same thing. And I don't have to add that. Photoshop text does not have tabs that work really well. Like you can't set a tab like you can in a word processor. So indents become really important to your life um, in keeping things lined up correctly. And then um, this one, let's do, let's select here and do 15 points. Um, that sets the space in between the paragraphs. So again, if I were to add another paragraph here, go like so. And mind you, now I have this plus sign that tells me that my little box no longer works. Because remember, Photoshop is about graphics. It's not about type. So here, if I drag that down, then that plus sign goes away. But it basically sets up the next paragraph the same way. So it repeats that. So it has these little small ways of allowing you to do typesetting. So what I said before was I've done a lot of page ads in Photoshop. 
If it's something that's going to be multiple pages, I generally don't do it in Photoshop for this reason. In um, in InDesign, InDesign is really designed to have multiple pages that I can do a lot with. I can force Photoshop to do that, but InDesign would be a better tool for a multi-page document. Most of the advertise with a lot of text. Most of the advertisements I do are very photo-based. I'm a photographer after all. So they're usually very photo based and they're over the top of a photo. So I have a picture here. Um, let me go ahead and click that. You have to click the check or the, the no check if you don't want to use it. Um, and I'm going to click over here to an image um, that I can add some text to to show you a possible way to do that. Now, my watermark is added in Lightroom. So it's not added in Photoshop. So this is actually stamped on this image because this image is destined to be put on social media at some point. But I could um, put, you know, something like experience would help if I could spell. Hope you guys enjoy all my faux pas in these videos. <laughs> Magic of horses. I want to keep it real. I want you to know that I'm nothing special that, um, that uh, you too can uh, use Photoshop without worry. So I'm going to move this here. So that would be an example of using typeset. If I wanted to use that size font, probably would make it just a little bit closer together. So this is where I would use that tracking to add, you know, to leave the font the same height. But this is what I'm talking about when I do graphic design. And if this were an ad, you know, I would put in information about how they could experience the magic of horses. I would love to invite you to experience the magic of horses at one of our workshops where you can take photos like this. <laughs> so if you would like to experience that, please reach out or check out cowgirlswithcameras.com to learn how you can come with us and be part of that and learn some of these techniques in person from myself or my business partners, Phyllis Burchette and Kara Taylor Swift. All right, I think I've given you a pretty good rundown of how to use text in Photoshop. And this is a good way if you want to do postcards or business cards or again, page ads, or add some text to your photos for um, social media, then you now have the skills to be able to do that. And you should understand enough about being able to use the text dialog box to get that accomplished. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And I'll see you in the next video.